The stakes were high going into the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow, and I think so were the levels of skepticism, especially from the industry and activist groups. There were around 120 leaders in attendance, including some of our colleagues who spoke at various industry events. The breakthrough agenda, modelled on the UK's net zero strategy, the commitment set ambitious goals for 2030 to dramatically accelerate the innovation and deployment of clean technologies in five key sectors of the economy. Power, road, transport, steel, hydrogen and agriculture, generating 20 million jobs in the process. A declaration was also made accelerating the transition to 100% zero emission cars and vans, signed by national governments, states, vehicle manufacturers, businesses, investors and civil society, who have all committed to working towards 100% zero emission vehicle sales by 2035 at the latest in leading markets and by 2040 globally. COP26 and the Glasgow Climate Pact was on balance a success and managed to make progress towards next year's COP27 in Egypt. Some areas standing out for the negotiations were first, a swifter roadmap for the revision of national plans to limit temperature rises to 1.5 degrees Celsius, which will be on the agenda for the next COP as a clearer objective. Second, a more concrete plan on reducing the use of fossil fuels and particularly coal, although the wording of phasing down is less powerful than the phasing out term that was initially proposed. Third, a more effective framework of support from developed to developing countries to help not just with emissions reductions but also with adaptation. Supporting climate vulnerable nations with losses and damages from climate change were key and crucial areas of discussion. The Glasgow Climate Pact aims to double the adaptation finance by 2025 with $365 billion raised for the Adaptation Fund and $412 million for the Least Developed Countries Fund. There is also a two-year work programme to bring the Paris Agreement goal and adaptation to action. However, the $100 billion annual climate finance pledge is barely enough. Voices from developing countries were louder, but it has to be listened to. We must support climate vulnerable countries and invest more in adaptation. Along with the UK's plan for zero emission vehicles, this intent proves you are on the right trajectory and moving towards low carbon transportation. The Clyde Bank Declaration for Green Shipping Lanes and International Aviation Climate Ambition Coalition are also commitments that support positive steps in transport decarbonisation. This was my first COP, so it was really great to see the buzz around the conference. One of the things that really came across to me was that there is absolutely no technological barrier to meeting 1.5 degrees. We already have the vast majority of the technological solutions, whether that be renewables, EVs, hydrogen, all of which are developing and deploying at speed internationally. I spent a day in the Innovation Zone at the Hydrogen Transition Summit and it was amazing seeing the advances that have been made and the technologies that have been developed and tested even in the last five years since COP23. If the market is there, industry is able to respond and respond rapidly. The primary challenge is not technical. The primary challenge is around transitioning economies as quickly as possible and trying to do it in a way that is fair and doesn't place an unbearable burden on the poorest. This is where public policy is so important. Attending COP26 on the Transportation Day, there was a curious juxtaposition of positivity and worry in the air, serving as a reminder that although progress is being made, we are a long way from meeting our global climate targets. It was clear that amongst the necessary noise by the far-reaching ends of this debate, there is real effort and innovation happening within industry going on behind the scenes. However, this effort must be supported by industry collaboration across jurisdictions, ensuring that the current patchwork of sustainable technology can come together creating a sum even greater than the part. An important gain is also that climate change has now become deeply embedded into the consciousness of people, corporations and politicians across the globe. This fills me with optimism that on the back of the Glasgow summit we will see further concrete actions which will set the stage for stronger commitments at COP27 taking place in Egypt. It's been great to see some firmer commitments and targets, but as always it's easy to set targets it's harder to hit them. It's all about the detailed policy mechanisms. We're excited to be working with industry, technology, innovators and the government here in the UK to move things forward over the next 12 months. And personally, I'm already packing my sunscreen for COP27 in Egypt next year.